In this video, I like to talk about or demo how to use the color pickers, either the foreground or background color picker, they work the same, the color panel and the swatches panel to select colors that you will apply in your design. So there's two types of colors. They're the colors that are the foundation of reproduction of your artwork, and that is red, green, and blue, and cyan, magenta, yellow, and black. And then there are colors that you see and you apply in your design. You're not worrying about whether the image is made from RGB or CMYK when you're making a, a green brush stroke in a painting. All you care about at the time is that you want green in the background and you want blue in the foreground. When it's time to reproduce your artwork, either displaying it on the web or physically printing ink on paper, you are going to recreate that image using a limited color palette of red, green, and blue or cyan, magenta, yellow, and black. In this demo video, I will show you how to select colors that you see and use on screen. So let's jump over to Photoshop. I have that same image of the house open. It doesn't matter what image you have open for this demo. Uh, the color pickers can be found in a number of ways. Anytime you see these little squares, and there's one on the left and one on the right, the one on the left is the foreground, the one on the right is the background. Anytime you see them, you can double click them to launch a color picker. I double click the one on the left so I got the color picker for the foreground color. If I double click the one on the right, I will get the, duh, the color picker for the background. I think to select colors in this panel, it's pretty self-explanatory. You choose a color from the color ramp, so slide this slider up and down or click and it will automatically snap. And so if you wanted to apply a brown color, you would come down to maybe the oranges and then click across the color square until you find the color that you want. The color square goes from fully saturated on the right hand side to desaturated on the left. So I have orange and then I have no orange on the left. And then it goes from lightest, so white, to darkest at the bottom. But for now you can just click around, use the color ramp to choose the hue or the color that you want and then refine that color by clicking around the square. When you found the color that you want to use, go ahead and select OK. Be careful though, I just set the background color. So if I start to paint with a paintbrush, I am painting with the foreground color. And so you'll want to make sure that if you want to paint with the background color, that you switch the colors and make background color the foreground. Okay, the second panel, which I don't particularly care for, but I will show you how to get to it in case you like it, is the color panel. You can open it by going to the window menu and choosing color. The color panel has lots of different settings. Uh, at its default, it kind of looks like the color picker. You choose a color from a color ramp and then you click through the square. Desaturated colors on the left, saturated colors on the right, light colors, whites on the top, dark colors, blacks on the bottom, and then you can set the color that you want to use. If you hit the options flyout menu, you can actually change the, the settings. So you could do a color wheel, which would allow you to see how colors work in relationship to one another. You can do web colors. You can even do web safe colors so that you're only choosing colors that are common on the web and will definitely work on all display devices. The last option I want to show you is the most valuable option. If you open the swatches panel, so go to the window menu and choose swatches, you not only can select colors, but you can save colors. And so right now I have a bunch of swatches that I've saved. Coral, sunshine, water, grass, taffy, and plum. If you have a color that you think you're going to use over and over again, you're going to want to save it so that you don't have to figure out how to reselect the color. You can save your own custom colors by selecting a color via any of the options that I've already covered. So I'll select one via the color picker. It's in the foreground color. So now if I hit the plus sign on the bottom right hand corner of the swatches panel, it will allow me to add that exact color as a swatch and then I can call this bright pink. If you're working for a client and they have a custom color they want you to use, you can add a custom color and then you can name it logo green or client's name purple, um, however that happens to be. You can also load colors from color libraries. So if you hit the options flyout menu on the swatches panel, you can open legacy swatches 
And Legacy Swatches is a swatch library full of a bunch of different libraries that you can select colors from. And so we don't talk a lot about it in this class, but if you wanted to ensure color consistency across devices, you can actually select colors from a swatch book. And so if you're looking at the same swatch book and someone else is looking at it, you're looking at the same colors. And so if you pick a Pantone color and someone tells you they need to use Pantone Purple C, you can select that swatch from a swatch library. You can actually launch this from the picker dialog as well. So instead of clicking through here and trying to find a color that you like, you can click on color libraries. You can then find the correct color library that you and your client are using. Maybe you're using a metallic color. You're printing metallic ink, so you can't see metallic ink on screen, but anywhere you use this color, you would be saying, I want to use metallic ink. And you can choose a color that you like for your project. With it selected, you can then add the color swatch and you can name it whatever you want. A huge benefit of using the swatches panel is that you can use the same swatch over and over again. And so let me turn the opacity up on this brush. So if I wanted to paint with green in the sky and then I was doing edits and an hour and a half later I come back and say, oh, I wanna paint with the same green again, I would simply select the swatch and then I'm guaranteed to select the same color. If I try to pick a color, so let's say that I switch and I'm painting with yellow, then I'm painting with orange, and now I don't have the grass green swatch saved. If I wanna paint over these, I would have to come back and try to find the correct color. I could use this dropper and hope that I'll get the right color, and then when I paint, hopefully it matches, but it's a lot more work to ensure you're grabbing the same color than it is to literally just click on the grass.